Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Koff and I am a lecturer and researcher at the University of Birmingham in the UK. Today we'll be talking to you about how children's expressions of certainty are informative. This is a particularly exciting and fun project for me, not only because the results are pretty interesting, but also because of the super group of collaborators who input into this work. Most of the collaborators are students and postdocs, and you'll be hearing from some of them as we walk through the presentation today. Each year, millions of children around the world become witnesses or victims of crime. Children's testimonies then are becoming increasingly present in criminal justice systems around the world. In the UK, for example, the number of children contributing memory evidence increased by 60% between 2006 and 2009. Despite this, Surprisingly little research has investigated the reliability of children's memory evidence. In the adult witness literature, it's been suggested that a good metric for legal decision makers to decide how much trust to place in witness memory evidence is to use metacognitive measures, such as confidence judgments. This is because regardless of a witness's average memory accuracy, a person with a reliable memory has good metacognitive ability and is able to appropriately modulate their certainty in response to their memory performance. So they would report higher confidence when they're likely to be correct and lower confidence when they're not likely to be correct. A key question then is whether children can monitor their memory accuracy. The eyewitness literature and the basic developmental literature have come to conflicting conclusions. Within the eyewitness identification literature, children from ages eight and above are typically tested. And they have generally come to consensus that children are unreliable witnesses because children under the age of 12 have yet developed the skills to be able to monitor their memory, nor to use confidence to indicate accuracy. Critically, this conclusion has informed legal guidance worldwide. Yet a more positive picture emerges when we consider developmental research, which suggests that from ages of four and five, children have developed some ability to monitor their memories and to use confidence scales, and that this skill improves throughout childhood. Moreover, instead of obtaining confidence, which is an explicit metacognitive judgment, some research has shown that young children from the ages of three are able to express uncertainty implicitly without full awareness using gestures such as shaking their head, shrugging their shoulders, or asking for help if they're unsure. So why are there conflicting results? The first reason might be the task itself. Memories from complex witness events may be more difficult for children to monitor compared to the simple stimuli used in developmental work. A second reason might be that different methods have been used to measure memory monitoring. For example, eyewitness researchers have rarely measured implicit metacognition, but this is measured frequently in the developmental literature. A third reason is differences in the statistical approach in analysing explicit confidence judgments. A common approach in the developmental literature is to calculate the average confidence for correct versus incorrect decisions, but this does not provide all the information relevant to examine memory monitoring, because there could be a poor correspondence between confidence and accuracy, even if confidence is, on average, higher for correct than incorrect decisions. Conversely, eyewitness researchers have measured the correspondence between confidence judgments and accuracy, but the applied literature has used approaches that can underestimate the relationship, such as correlations or calibrations analyses. To better understand the divide between basic and applied research, we first reanalyze data from both fields using confidence accuracy characteristic analysis. In these plots, accuracy is on the y-axis and confidence is on the x-axis. If there is a relationship between confidence and accuracy, then we'd expect to see something like the gray dashed line in each plot, which indicates chance accuracy for the lowest level of confidence and perfect accuracy for the highest level of confidence. We found six list learning memory studies in the developmental literature that collected confidence. There was generally a strong relationship between confidence and accuracy, because as confidence increased, so did accuracy. This was true across a wide range of stimuli and experimental tasks. The only time this was not true was when three-year-olds were tested in Hembacher and Getty's studies, as shown by the white circles, but ages four and five had a relationship in this study. On some tasks, children had a better confidence accuracy relationship than older adults. Children were slightly overconfident at high confidence because children were often around 80% correct for their highest confidence. But nevertheless, 
Overall, children's confidence ratings were informative about their likely accuracy. We also replotted data from an eyewitness identification study where children watched a video of a mock crime and then made an identification from a lineup. Below is a summary graph collapsed over the two experiments in the Keystadol study. Again, children were slightly overconfident at high confidence, but consistent with the basic literature, and in contrast to what the eyewitness literature and the legal system believes to be true, this reanalysis indicates that a child's expression of confidence provides information about the likely accuracy of their sus suspect ident identification. It seems like the contradiction between the de developmental and eyewitness literature is more apparent than real. Next, we conducted our own eyewitness ID experiment with a broader age range of children to examine the confidence accuracy relationship. We also wanted to examine if an implicit measure of metacognition was informative about accuracy in younger children from age four. With the help of a group of research assistants, we collected data from over 2000 children at a public engagement event. We divided the child sample into three age groups with mean ages of five, eight and 12 years. So the late childhood group contains children similar to the age of those in the Keist et al study. The children in our study first watched one of two videos depicting a man called James. After two minutes, children were presented either with a target present lineup, which contained the man from the video, or a target absent lineup that did not. We used an interactive lineup that we have recently developed in our lab. In the lineup, children could click on a face and rotate the faces to see them from different angles. After making an identification decision, we asked children how sure they were. We used a clever water cup confidence scale from Brewer et al, whereby more water indicated that the child was more sure. So what did we find? First, just checking memory performance, we can see that the ability to discriminate innocent from guilty suspects improved with age. This discriminability difference was mainly due to an increase in correct IDs of guilty suspects in target present lineups with age. This pattern of results replicates more recent eyewitness studies and a meta-analysis on children's ID performance. Next, moving on to our main findings of interest, here is the CAC plot for each age group. On this plot, larger circles indicate more suspect IDs. The young children from age four, as shown by the white circles, did not show a confidence accuracy relationship. The middle age group from age seven, as shown by the gray circles, had an emerging relationship. IDs made with medium and high confidence were more accurate than IDs made with low confidence, but also Note that a lot of IDs were made with medium and high confidence. This is where accuracy did not differ. The late childhood group, age 10, as shown by the black circles, had a strong confidence accuracy relationship, perhaps an even stronger relationship than the reanalysis of the Keist et al. data. We performed additional analyses in this late childhood group and the confidence accuracy in the 10 to 12 year olds was as strong as the relationship in the 13 to 17 year olds. We also fit a constant likelihood ratio signal detection model to the data to test whether and at what age children optimally place their decision criteria to assign appropriate confidence judgments that correspond to their memory accuracy. Now I don't have time to go into the detail of this model fitting today, but in short, the model fitting show that those in middle childhood, but especially those in young childhood, place their decision criteria more liberally than was necessary to achieve the same level of accuracy at each level of confidence as the late childhood group. As people have said before, it seems like the young children were overly optimistic. Those in young childhood did not show a meaningful relationship between confidence and accuracy, but were younger children able to appropriately express uncertainty implicitly, such as via their viewing behaviour during the interactive lineup. First, to explore suspect ID accuracy with seemingly automatic decisions in which a face stood out to the participant, we examined whether the first face of the children rotated could differentiate between correct IDs of the culprits and false IDs of innocent suspects. It could. In young children, those who made correct ID of a culprit were about four times more likely to interact first with a suspect instead of a filler, 
than those who made a false idea of an insult suspect. This was also true in middle and late childhood. Next, to explore accuracy for seemingly automatic fast decisions compared to considered slow decisions, we took the overall length of time participants spent rotating the faces and, in each age group, created two interaction groups, high and low interaction, using a median split. Suspect ID accuracy was higher for low compared to high interactors in each age group. Moreover, in each age group, there was a trend for low interactors to have better memory discrimination accuracy than high interactors, so the difference was not statistically significant. More research is required with larger sample sizes in low and high interactor groups, but this provides preliminary evidence that something as simple as who interacted with and the amount of time taken exploring lineup phases might be informative about the likely accuracy of witness identifications, even in young children. The key take home message is that the long standing contradiction between the basic and applied literatures does not appear to be real. Considering confidence, our reanalysis indicated that whether tested using a basic list memory paradigm or an eyewitness identification paradigm, a positive confidence accuracy relationship exists in children of at least 10 years old. Moreover, the basic literature has tested younger children and indicates a positive relationship from around the age of five. Together, our exploratory analyses on children's interactivity behaviour and the previous developmental literature indicate that measuring implicit metacognition could improve the way in which researchers and legal practitioners assess the certainty and accuracy of memories in young children. More generally, our research concludes it's imperative that we continue to use evidence from basic and applied science to inform and investigate novel ways to determine the likely accuracy of child memory evidence. Thank you again to the amazing collaborators that made this work possible and also to our funders. And thank you very much to you for listening. <laughs>